Uh, my name is Hyunjul Lee, and I'm working for Huali Katapur as a leader of uh, drive train knowledge area, area, so purely mechanical engineer. And <coughs> I hope to present uh, our organization and uh, introduce uh, what it's now doing to develop uh, tidal and wind uh, energy. So offshore renewable energy catapult, why uh, we need a catapult in UK? So UK research sector, uh, one of the, the top performers uh, in worldwide, uh, but uh, excellent uh, can be, cannot be uh, transferred to the industry. So uh, entrepreneur uh, Haman Hauser uh, reported uh, to government, uh, we need to build uh, this organization to bridging the gap between the, between the uh, academia and industry. So UK government uh, set up now uh, 11 catapults, uh, and we are one of them. Our vision is uh, the purely uh, reduce the cost of energy in wave, tidal, and offshore wind. So the to deliver uh, our aim uh, to industry and uh, academia, uh, we have uh, uh, some number of inter uh, interesting uh, sector, including the R&D uh, department, uh, which I working for. And in under the R&D uh, department, uh, we have uh, the six uh, knowledge area: uh, blade, drive, uh, drive train, and electrical infrastructure, foundation, operation and maintenance, and wave and tidal. This is uh, our testing site. So, as you can see, uh, we have a three megawatt drivetrain test facility, which is mainly designed for the wave energy testing, and the fifteen megawatt uh, drivetrain test facility, including fifteen mega uh, fifty meter blade test facility and the one hundred meter blade test facility and also electrical infrastructure uh, testing facility. All of these uh, facilities uh, may need to uh, deliver uh, the technical excellence to industry. And uh, one of the interesting is that uh, our drivetrain test facility is, has, come in, uh, has something like uh, some excellent feature, including six degree of freedom loading test. Uh, the, before this test facility, the industry uh, just can do uh, the torque-only test, uh, which is uh, pretty much enough uh, to test the uh, component itself, but uh, cannot uh, entirely emulate uh, actual operating condition. Uh, so uh, even though uh, industry can complete the testing by using the torque-only test, uh, uh, they can prove uh, the reliability of the component uh, only. But with this uh, six degree of freedom loading test uh, facility, we can emulate uh, uh, actual the operating condition and uh, we can test the uh, entire drivetrain system in the same time. Okay, uh, this is the pretty pictures. Uh, one is from our 100 meter uh, blade test facility, uh, which is uh, the currently the one of the largest uh, blade test facility. And also the uh, 15, me uh, 15 megawatt uh, drive train test facility, and the 3 megawatt and ele uh, electrical uh, laboratory. And we also have uh, the our own the 100 meter uh, the weather and environmental condition uh, measure ma measuring mass. Uh, we call that NOAA uh, near our flight site. And by using this NOAA platform, uh, we keep measuring the actual environment condition. And uh, we are now developing how we can transfer this actual environment condition to uh, testing uh, condition. We also have our own 7 megawatt uh, the operating uh, R&D uh, turbine in Scotland. And by using this platform, we hope to uh, introduced a new technology into the conservative uh, offshore wind turbine market. So the 
uh, based on the Innovate UK program, the, we have uh, uh, the industrial uh, advisory group and also research advice group, uh, which is uh, chaired by Edinburgh University. And uh, from these two advisory groups, uh, we uh, received uh, the two voices from the academic and also from industry. So, uh, that is, uh, that was my the brief introduction of uh, Wally Katapu, and uh, uh, from now, I hope to introduce uh, our R&D activity, current R&D activity, related to mainly to uh, offshore wind and the tidal, uh, pro uh, tidal industry. The one of the, our biggest uh, project uh, currently is a tidal EC project, uh, which is funded by uh, FP7 uh, uh, program. And during this uh, project, uh, we are now working uh, with three uh, major uh, tidal uh, turbine developer in UK uh, and Europe. The one is the Tocardo and the Minesto and the Ocean Floor. So those three company has a different type of uh, uh, tidal turbine uh, concept. The Tocardo has a very uh, conventional uh, tidal turbine, and the ocean floor has the floating type uh, tidal turbine, and the Minesto has the kind of the exciting kite tight turbine, uh, tidal turbine. And uh, uh, the basic idea of this uh, project is that by combining the all the experience from these three uh, actual industry uh, company, industrial company, uh, we hope to find uh, what could be the best uh, practice uh, in terms of the uh, LCOE and also reliability. So we are involved in the powertrain uh, optimization and also uh, cost of energy calculation. And to evaluate uh, developed concept, uh, we suggest uh, testing methodology. And uh, uh, the, this project is uh, now uh, come to uh, end of the project, and also uh, the we are now developing this type of uh, very unique uh, testing device. Uh, this including a uh, very big water tank to submerge the real uh, size uh, tidal turbine uh, during the test. So by, this, uh, by using this methodology, we can uh, evaluate uh, actual efficiency and uh, heat transfer and all other things. Another project is the record uh, project. Uh, during this project, uh, we hope to demonstrate a uh, 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 critical component in the tidal turbine. Uh, and so uh, to find out uh, what could be the uh, the m uh, most critical failure mode and uh, which component is related to this uh, failure mode. And then uh, we uh, hope to suggest uh, how to monitor uh, this critical component and the failure mode uh, with an uh, efficient way. And this project, uh, including the seven partners from four European companies, Uh, so during this project, uh, Junibar uh, will provide a wave measurement VOE, uh, which can measure the real-time uh, ocean uh, environmental condition uh, based on the GPS sensors, and, uh, and also the data, uh, uh, detail uh, will suggest an uh, innovative methodology to uh, connect uh, uh, wave turbine into the foundation or other structural support. And Junibel uh, will provide uh, a full-scale uh, wave energy converter, which will be investigate during, uh, investigated during this project. And also, wave EC uh, will provide uh, the real-time measurement system to monitor the health of the cable or other wiring. 
Another project is uh, LIASO. Uh, we call that uh, the, the reliability in the sea of risk. Uh, so uh, this uh, uh, project uh, uh, aims to identify the real reliability of uh, the tested uh, tidal and the other uh, powertrain uh, takeoff system. So uh, identification is uh, the actually the we assume uh, this the environmental condition, so we call that a uh, load distribution uh, during the operation, and also uh, designer or engineer aim to have uh, this level of uh, strength uh, when they design the uh, or develop uh, the uh, uh, tidal turbine. Uh, but this uh, and we call that the gap between this uh, real loading uh, distribution and the strength uh, of uh, turbine. We call the safety factor. But uh, because of uh, some kind of the uncertainty, uh, including the tolerance in the designing and the manufacturing, and also actual environmental condition can be changed. So this safety factor, if the safety factor, uh, safety factor is not uh, big enough, then easily we can find some overlap between the uh, load, dis uh, load distribution and also strength uh, distribution. And then uh, the overlap area can be a risk uh, risk area and uh, that will lower the reliability of uh, the uh, new design. So our aim uh, during this uh, project is to uh, identify uh, real uh, load distri uh, distribution uh, in from the real field and also the by using the test uh, how we can prove uh, or evaluate uh, actual uh, strengths. Uh, And the other project is that we are now involved in the, the high uh, voltage uh, DC multi-modular converter system development. So this picture is a kind of the example of uh, some uh, current uh, state of art technology. As you can see, uh, most of the offshore renewable energy wind farm uh, using the high voltage or the medium voltage AC uh, distribution system. And to use that kind of con technical concept, uh, we need to have this size of, uh, very large size of uh, centralized uh, uh, offshore platform uh, to install the converter and transformer for a, a a medium voltage or high voltage AC transmission. But uh, our concept is uh, by using high voltage DC power distribution system, uh, we believe uh, we can modulize uh, all of this uh, transformer and the converter and install that small size and the modulize uh, uh, the transformer and converter into the individual wind turbine. So nowadays, the wind farm itself, the size of the wind farm is getting bigger and bigger and easily exceed uh, 200 megawatt uh, per uh, each individual wind farm. And also the individual wind turbine itself uh, is getting bigger. Now the, the average size of the offshore wind uh, turbine is uh, more than 3 megawatt and the uh, most uh, uh, the biggest uh, model uh, came from the best size is now 8 megawatt. So that means this offshore wind farm, uh, wind platform uh, need to be bigger and bigger and also uh, the, the, the space uh, inside of the individual wind turbine will get bigger. So we believe uh, by using this uh, high voltage uh, DC power transmission uh, concept, we can lower the, the actual installation cost uh, and the capex uh, by eliminating this size of the big uh, platform. And one of the our interesting uh, the project uh, ongoing is the developing compact high efficiency generator by using uh, magnetic gear and uh, the advanced uh, generator concept. So, uh, as I said, the uh, nowadays uh, the size of the individual wind turbine is getting bigger, and uh, our final aim is uh, developing the floating wind turbine uh, for future. Because uh, after 2020 or 2022, uh, the 
uh, we believe uh, the most of uh, wind uh, the area uh, which has the low, narrow uh, sea level uh, will be uh, occupied by the wind farm. And then we need to go further uh, to install the wind turbine. Uh, uh, for that uh, case, uh, the many the more than the 50 meter uh, deep water, uh, uh, we need to develop a, a floating wind farm. And uh, to develop wind, a floating wind turbine, there are some number of uh, known, very well known uh, technical challenges, including high acceleration uh, in top of the wind turbine because of the swirling uh, movement uh, of the uh, floating wind turbine. And uh, because of that uh, high acceleration on top of the tower, uh, we get what we estimate uh, the current uh, gearbox uh, concept will have some uh, issue uh, because the uh, lubrication inside of the gearbox uh, will support uh, by the high acceleration and we estimate uh, that lubrication will not work under that kind of a high acceleration concept. So we focus on this uh, interesting concept. By using a magnetic, uh, we can increase the rotating speed as a, uh, the what, uh, as a gearbox. So without actual uh, mechanical gear, uh, we can uh, step up the speed of rotating. So by eliminating the mechanical gear, uh, we still can transfer uh, the low uh, rotating speed uh, of rotor size uh, to high rotating speed of the generator. And that means we don't need to use the lubricant uh, for gearbox. And then uh, the, the, the basic issue will be eliminated. So during this project, uh, this will continue the 2018, and uh, uh, we are now working with uh, Magnomatics in Sheffield. Uh, and this company will develop uh, this new uh, gearbox, uh, magnetic gearbox and generator concept. And uh, we will develop a new test methodology to test uh, actual effi efficiency and other uh, the performance of a new uh, generator. And another project uh, we are now almost finished is the, the for the blade. Uh, as you know, the, the, the getting the, the uh, bigger wind turbine need to have a bigger uh, blade. And the bigger blade uh, need to be tested uh, very carefully. And the current standard and the industry, uh, industry the, just do some kind of the uh, uniaxial test uh, based on the standard, international standard. But uh, in real field, uh, blade uh, uh, has uh, very complex uh, loading condition, uh, including the biaxial loading. So the, uh, we point out uh, current standard uh, testing methodology is not sufficient enough uh, to test a large size uh, blade. And then we are now developing this biaxial uh, blade loading test. And one of the beauty of this test is uh, actually we can accelerate uh, the uh, fatigue loading uh, by using this uh, dual X uh, loading test. Uh, and also this dual X uh, loading test uh, is very similar to uh, uh, what uh, the, the, the real operating condition. So uh, we believe uh, uh, by using this methodology, we can test uh, the blade uh, in more realistic way. And we also the keep improving our test methodology for the drivetrain uh, system and also component. Uh, and uh, one of the, the industrial uh, biggest or uh, strongest industrial lead uh, is the uh, uh, test uh, the older components and system for entire life. But uh, we cannot wait until 20 years uh, to test uh, this component and drive train. So we need to accelerate uh, the testing time to deliver similar amount of damage uh, to the component. The, the issue, the biggest uh, issue of this type of methodology, testing methodology is uh, uh, 
uh, wind turbine or tidal turbine uh, drive train itself is uh, too much complex, uh, which has uh, too many failure modes. So by using one test methodology, it's almost impossible to cover every or entire failure mode uh, in same time. So the, uh, what we are now focusing is uh, by using some the basic the failure mode uh, effect analysis, uh, uh, we try to prioritize uh, which uh, failure mode uh, could be the most critical uh, in terms of the LCOE. And after we are doing this type of prioritizing, the, we call that the failure mode screening. Uh, by after the uh, failure mode screening, we focused uh, some number of uh, maybe many three or four uh, major failure mode uh, and uh, find out this type of uh, this type of uh, ascent curve for that specific uh, failure mode to transfer the real operating condition to uh, accelerated uh, lifetime uh, testing loading. So by using this uh, failure mode screening and uh, uh, find out the ascent curve for the specific uh, failure mode, uh, we believe uh, we can uh, test uh, that critical failure mode uh, in very short time. Uh, some other uh, interesting project uh, we are now involved in the, uh, this type of uh, the Sparta. Uh, by using this uh, uh, program, actually the, the, the aim of this program, the Sparta program, is uh, uh, something like uh, uh, the, the, you know, the we already spent more than 20 years to develop wind turbine and more than 10 years to develop uh, tidal turbine. It's quite uh, relatively, yeah, relatively the very short period uh, compared to automotive, uh, but it's quite long period uh, to get uh, good lesson learned from the uh, real operating field. But still, uh, the wind and tidal industry is very, very con uh, conservative and competitive. Uh, so nobody wants to share what they uh, learn uh, from the industry, uh, the real field. So by using this Sparta program, we suggest uh, uh, to collect uh, uh, the real field data under the anonymous uh, and uh, share the reference data, reference value of each uh, measured data. So the, we are now collecting more than 90% of uh, wind turbine installed in the uh, UK offshore field. And uh, we, the, the monthly, the reported uh, what could be the, the reference value of the performance and uh, what could be the, the, the failure uh, rate uh, for each component. Uh. So uh, based on this program, the, now the offshore wind farm operator uh, can know how good or how poor uh, their wind farm uh, is uh, compared to others. And the BLIP project uh, is the Blade leading edge erosion uh, program. So, uh, in especially in the north of the England and Scotland, uh, there are quite harsh weather, including some storm and uh, some ice seam. So, uh, the blade leading edge er er erosion uh, is uh, much worse uh, than other places, and because of that uh, erosion. Uh, efficiency of uh, rotor and blade uh, is getting lower and lower. And some, mm -hmm. for the worst case, uh, some report uh, indicate uh, it's about uh, two to three percent of uh, efficiency uh, can be reduced uh, per year uh, in the in, I at the beginning at the beginning of uh, the operation. It's a uh, quite severe uh, cases. So uh, we focus how we can prevent uh, this type of uh, leading edge erosion and also uh, how we can repair the, the damaged uh, blade uh, leading edge. So the we are now starting uh, this project uh, to develop uh, some kind of the metallic leading edge or other coating methodology uh, with uh, some number of uh, industrial partners. And the other one is the CRMP, uh, CRMF uh, enable an assessment of the cost of the offshore wind project uh, and the, this is the kind of the overall uh, look uh, to find out 
what could be the bottleneck or critical uh, component uh, in terms of the uh, cost of energy of tidal and the wind turbine project uh, and uh, how we can reduce uh, uh, that kind of critical area. Okay. And we, one of the, our proud is actually that we have uh, the real, uh, the seven megawatt uh, operating R&D uh, wind turbine in Scotland. And also we have uh, same dry plane uh, in our test uh, method, uh, test, uh, <coughs> test lead. By using this uh, seven megawatt wind turbine and the uh, testing nozzles, uh, what we are now keep trying is uh, uh, to transfer the real operating condition to uh, test uh, efficient uh, test uh, uh, condition. And also, uh, wind industry is uh, very conservative. Uh, so <coughs> because the, 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 uh, the investment of, uh, the size of investment for one uh, wind farm is uh, easily exceed uh, uh, some billion uh, pound. So nobody uh, want to invest in new technology. So it's quite difficult for SMEs or new development uh, to enter this conservative market. So uh, what we focus is uh, maybe if we can test uh, that new technology by using this uh, uh, testing nacelle with uh, uh, our uh, transport uh, testing condition, then we can maybe evaluate uh, and uh, guarantee the reliability of new development. And then we can uh, install the new technology into our testing, uh, testing turbine for some, something like two, one or two years to evaluate uh, real performance and reliability. Uh, by using this route, uh, we believe uh, we can shorten uh, the time to market for new technology. So I think that we can provide a quite good opportunity for the new uh, development, uh, developed uh, technology for wind turbine. Okay. So that was uh, the brief overview uh, overlook of uh, what we are now developing and uh, involved there. And uh, actually, the, our final aim is the lower the cost of energy of wind turbine and the tidal turbine and also wave turbine. To lower this cost of energy, the, we need to improve the reliability and also we need to keep introducing new technology to this uh, uh, industry. So uh, our future work uh, will focus on the turbine reliability and validation and uh, continue to expanding e existing projects. Uh, and and also, the, the we are involved in the developing the floating wind turbine for future after 2020. Okay, that was uh, my brief introduction of uh, our activity and Wally Katakul. Uh, thank you very much. And do we have any questions? This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.